Hey, 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 Superior Shave fans and other humans. It is uh, 19 of August, 2022, and this morning I am honing two razors. Uh, the first one is a Sears Assard Le Guerlo with an ebony wood handle. And uh, the second one is a 2022 production Dovo Inox. That's number 41 on the tang. And the uh, the new code number is uh, 1358-1087. Boy, that just flows right off the tongue, right? And it's uh, 415835 in the old system. This is the Inox with ebony wood. And it's got that uh, 2022 markings, and the 2022 markings denoting it is a, uh, uh, whatever, the alloy, 1.4034. Alrighty. We're gonna hone these, but first let's let's hear them on the strop now. Now the um, the La Grillo is officially described as extra hollow ground by Thiers Assard, and then the 41 is just standard hollow ground. Let's see, I can uh, overdo. Well. I wonder if it'll make the ringing sound from the factory. That's a no on the on the Dovo. Oh, we've got a little bit from the Grillo. Let's do some honing over there. So as you know from dutifully watching this channel, I begin with a shape like this. Like this shape coming toward the razor. Woo woo. It's a wheel that is two meters wide. A wheel that is as thick as the hone's width and the diameter of the imaginary wheel is six and a half feet. That's this stone here. As you can see, it's got quite the curve. And that is used to impart more concavity to the bevel than was put on the razor by the factory. That is not to say that they don't put concavity on, they certainly do. But the razors can take more without chipping or anything than they can put on, than they, than they do put on currently at the factory because, let's face it, the labor charge for sitting there and pushing the razor to the outer limits of its metallurgical abilities, it doesn't get back to you in terms of uh, selling a razor to the average person. Maybe the super fan like the crazy people like me and you will like that, but I don't think that the average person buying a straight razor needs it. Um, it helps to have a little bit of concavity, you know I believe that, but I think you can do more. So I'm going to concave them quite a bit with that one, and then I switch to a stone that I've shaped to a shape of five meters. And that's this one, which is about two and a quarter millimeter thicker in the middle than the other than the ends, and it's a, a cylinder shape, uh, so it's pretty much flat across this way, and then going down here, it's it's curved to a shape of you know 17 feet or something like that. And what that does is you you made the bevel thinner with your first step, and then you're going to hit the front of it because you're using a longer diameter. And after you see some wear from that one, then you switch to the final stone, which is, in my case, a hard black Arkansas. But any hard, flat, fine finisher you could use if you wish. I prefer to finish on the convex stone for the concave edge all the way through, but you will read in the uh, 1840s German textbook that it was common to use two stones that were convex to make bevel concavity and make the actual bevel that you're using very thin and then finish with a flat, hard, fine thing because, uh, because it's difficult to finish on a convex stone. But we're going to use the flat hard, we're going to use the convex stone because having shaved with each, I can tell that I like the concave all the way through a little bit better. Okay, let's go hone and we'll see you in a second. Okie dokie, thanks to the power of editing, I have finished honing the Inox. Uh, yeah, it still has the little uh, Solingen frown down there. You know, I don't want to take all that metal off of there. I think it's stupid. I think you're uh, making it so that the razor is less flexible and you're probably not going to use that area anyway. I think you should just uh, 
keep the razor as long as possible. And I, I mean long from the back of the razor to the cutting edge. The only real maintenance, once you get your black Arkansas stone shaped the way you want, which is a tremendous battle. I have had this stone for about five years, and the first year or so I had shaped it with a tile, a granite tile that I used the amateur Newtonian telescope mirror method to shape it as an ellipse, which was 30 feet by 25 feet. A very slight ellipse with a very long diameter, just so you could get the feel of the convex stone. Uh, that was what I could manage before I started uh, experimenting with CNC manufacture. But then, since then, once I got it to this shape, which is a lot more aggressive shape, uh, 8 meters by 2 meters, so quite curved this way. This took me four months of hitting up daily over there with a, with a sheet of sandpaper every shift. So, you know, 80 hours very conservatively of shaping time. Probably 100. But once I got it shaped the way I want it, I've been using it every single day for multiple years. And um, the only thing you have to do is you have to resurface it because it gets too glassy. So let's see if I can show you that. What I'm going to do to resurface it is go back to my reference form. And this is my concave shaping plate. Shaped uh, with a divot going down its 11 inch axis of uh, 8 meters and going across of 2 meters. And I just get that wet. And it, e it even works better to have the sandpaper bone dry, but it it'll work either way. But bone dry actually I think is better. Uh, a little bit of a dust problem, but okay. And I'm going to put this 150 grit Pro Sand from Norton. This is a silicon carbide based. The stone was shaped with its 10 inch axis facing the 11 inch axis of this plate. So when I resurface it, I will do the same thing. Because it is an ellipse. So you have to, you can't go like this or like this or like this. You have to put it on there the way you shaped it the first time, which is like this. And you just go like this here. Let me just uh, hold on to this part and go a little faster. Dee -ba -dee -ba -dee. It don't take much because the stone keeps its shape really well, really, really, really well. And so this surfacer is extremely close to the shape that's there and it just works to make the surface have a little bit more friction on it. You can hear new stone being released there. And I will finish the Grillo with this. This will dry out to have a diffused look. But you'll hear, if you watch these videos a lot, the, the, the first use of the stone after you resurface it uh, is better than that which follows because you're able to chase that feedback sensation. When it gets really glassy, it slows down a lot. But more importantly, for me to get the sensation that I'm looking for, I will tend to put too much pressure on. Remember, you are using a wheel, an imaginary wheel shape here. So when you put pressure on with a wheel, you are going to deflect the edge inward. The tip of the bevel will be curved from your pressure toward the central line of the razor expressed from the spine to the cutting edge. Uh, if you had a dished stone, you would be deflecting the razor edge the other way toward the outer boundaries of the razor, making the tip thick. When we use a wheel in pressure, we bend it inward. But there are limits to how much the metal will bend. You just got to make sure you rinse it off with water really good so you don't get a stray bullet of uh, silicon carbide rolling around and that'll scratch up the razor and make the customer mad. That's it. Uh, that was more than enough and I can use the razor now. I can use the hone now for, I don't know, a couple dozen sessions or something. Maybe 10, 12 sessions and I'll go hit it up again for 
a minute or two. If you're shaping the stone, you need to start with very coarse paper like this one, the 60 grit, which I use to shape one of the blocks of wood that we sell. Although, I really don't want to sell you any blocks of wood anymore because it's a damn hard job. Okay, let's hone this thing. Now this is the aggressively shaped stone that has a two meter diameter going down the eight inches of the stone. And it will quickly work to make this lug rouleau have new marks on the spine side of its factory incumbent bevel. And they will start just to the rear of the current bevel and then eventually they would creep forward and get the edge. When you work with a short diameter stone, if the diameter is chosen such that it is short enough, it is obviously going to interact with the cutting edge of the razor at a different spot than the actual cutting edge. This is grinding on the razor, not touching the edge, trying to reach the edge. Via that ring light that's over my left shoulder and behind your camera position, I am able to watch the new steel get formed on the razor. And along with watching the marks on the stone, this is some of the ways that I can tell when to stop and switch to the longer diameter stone. This part's a little boring, so I would imagine we're here another five to ten minutes until we've got the marks from this hone all along the spine and the edge. And then we'll switch to the longer diameter stone. I have put some marks with that short diameter stone such that I think I thinned the bevel a bit. Now we're going to go to the stone that's five meters long. And thus, it's abrasive action begins much closer to the apex than the previous stone. In fact, just behind the apex. And because it begins so close to the tip of the new bevel that we just created, it takes very little time for this shaper to put a flatter, that is to say, longer diameter shape at the tip of the bevel which is where you shave with it. And then you spend the rest of your time burnishing and bending that edge with the long diameter stone. Another minute or so of this and then we'll show you the black one and you can listen to the new sounds. Okay, that stone has some water on it and this is ballastol diluted with water to about uh, one to seven approximately, which is a little too thin. Plus we watered it down. So we're just gonna give it some more ballastol. We'll swirl that around and get that a little thicker. I love the on the fly relationship of the density of your honing solution and ballastol mixed with water. Alrighty, and so now, Observe the new sounds. Hey Chuck, it's your cousin Marvin Berry. You know that new sound you're looking for? Well, listen to this. That would be straight ahead strokes with the spine perpendicular to the uh, length of the hone and the edge leading the stroke. This is putting work in right at that apex 
And then when I try to bend and extrude that little portion of the of the razor which the black Arkansas has just addressed, I do that by using the secondary axis of this ellipse to aim this way, which is aiming a little bit toward the six and a half foot diameter of this stone. And I'm actually torquing the razor into the stone. You can feel the razor bending. You don't want to bend it too much, but you do want to bend it and hold that bend. And this, in my opinion, will make the very thinnest possible edge. Be mindful, I did not come up with this. I read about it with the help of my German landlord in the Polytechnische Mittel something, the 1840s German textbook that's on the Google. Um, he said, in one of the later pages, he was. it's talking about um, when you hone a razor, you can use a wheel to uh, I'm, I'm butchering the translation. Suffice it to say, it said, um, the honing of the last bit does not take place in a stationary position on the razor. All right, well, this asshole behind me is doing whatever he's doing, so I suppose we're just going to have to cut it short. Let's just go strop, okay? All righty, for the human buying the TSS further honed, fears a sard lug rollo. This is your razor being stropped after further honing. I hope it sounds nice and pingy. Oh, fucking rat bastard with this goddamn saw. Fucker. Christ, man. To be honest, not any better, is it? But I bet it shaves better. Whoopsie doodle, woohoo! Okay, thank you very much, sir. You guys have a nice day. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.